keep probably think about is would carry cats bet a hand like King Ten and King Jack himself? Wow. wow, I was going to check raise. Oh. How's it going guys? Welcome back to Andreas Freddy Poker. Today I'm gonna go into a hand from Triton Poker. You can find it in the description below. There's a link twitch.tv slash Triton Poker. Um, it's a heads up match in six plus hold'em. Uh, watch until the end of this video to find out about you know my um, take on mixed games on a mixed game like six plus hold'em. If you wanna know how to learn these games, what you should be doing and you know what I do if I wanna jump into those games. Um, having also a pot limit on my background and obviously play no limit hold them for quite some years. But let's have, have a look at the hand now, getting into the action. The action starts with Katz limping in for another 60k. You can see that he, as the out of position player here, um, has to make this decision first, of course, but he has the smaller amount in there, so the in position player has to put in more money in this format. And six plus Hold'em, you can also see that the out of uh, the player here with pocket aces, Katz, he has only 71% of equity. There's a lot of similarities with uh, the game Pot Limit Omaha. Um, you're not going to be that far ahead with any hand in this format unless you're specifically dominating something with like king uh, kings against king six offsuit or even yeah king six off king seven offsuit on the lines like this. But unless you're having that sort of domination, you're never going to be that far ahead. You can see that 71% here for the pocket aces. Uh, it comes goes over to Key who, who checks, and we're going to see a flop. It's top pair, but cats with the aces. Heading to the flop, cats checks over the key, um, who has a, you know a pretty good hand now. He flopped top pair, a backdoor straight run, a backdoor flush run. If you count correctly, any six, seven, um, a queen or a jack gives him a backdoor straight run. Any club gives him a backdoor flush run. Also, you know he could turn two pair right away, which would put him into the lead here. So you can see that he's having actually now 40% of equity against the pocket aces. And you know, he has an easy bet uh, with all these outs in position. Um, and also he can fold out some equity because any hand that cats might have here has, you know, some gut shot potential. There's, you know, almost nothing that could make a hand here. He's gonna feel pretty decent about his hand. He has running clubs. Cats being out of position here goes for the check call with the pocket aces. He has two red aces, not really any other option and go for, for this play. Um, in this instance, he's so-called turn determined. So the turn card is gonna reveal a lot whether his equity improves in this situation. If the turn is not a club, not a spade, and not uh, you know a straightening card, which is pretty hard actually. Um, you know, he's in equity versus the range that key has in this uh, in this instance is going to improve significantly but he has to you know be remaining on the bluff catching side unless of course he hits the ace of spades he got checked to and the 10 is definitely capable of making some interesting draws on the turn a really strong hand to have The turn is a nine of spades, which puts out another flush draw on the board and also pairing it. Now cats go, goes for a lead here. And in general, you definitely want to have some leading ranges um, in, in, this, in this instance. Key didn't raise before the flops. It's unlikely that he has pocket kings. And also, you know, you could have a hand like king nine, nine, eight. And if, you know, cats doesn't check raise those hands or doesn't check raise at all, um, you know, on, on, these, uh, on these boards, he can also establish leading ranges with quite a few strong hands. And then, you know, also 
bet something like aces here. The only problem that I see with betting a hand like aces, and it also comes from you know my PLO background. I actually don't know what, what the optimal line here is because I haven't played this game, but I also obviously have studied poker a lot. And here's the, here's the deal. If you're out of position in any poker game where the river or half of the rivers, for example, in Pot Limit Roma, change the current nuts, and look at this board, it's king nine, uh, nine eight. And as we know in this game, flush has actually beat um, full houses and there's two flush draws out there. You shouldn't bloat the pot all too much with you know a lot of your holdings, such as aces or maybe even ace king you wanna lead here. Um, because if you do that, you know, your opponent can then outplay you on the river with, you know, over bets that you're sometimes not going to be protected on if you have a betting range, for instance. So don't try to reduce or blow the pot, reduce the so-called SPR, the stack to pot ratio, make the pot big and the stack sizes. So for example, like a pot size left here on the river uh, would be pretty, pretty bad for uh, the out of position player with so many draws still to complete. So you wanna be a little bit careful with those plays. Pocket aces. Ten of key here, you got top pair, it's hard to fold, so you can't play. Key with the top pair, a 10 of uh, clubs blocker. Um, you know, goes out and makes a call. He's getting roughly one of four on a call. He doesn't have great equity against um, Cat's particular hand, but if Cat could, for example, lead a, a draw on, on this uh, on this board, even though he blocks some of them um, against that, he's obviously still ahead with his top pair, uh, and he wants to see a river, basically. Him for the call here. River card is a queen. Board's getting a little bit dicey. But I mean, if you got pocket aces and heads up, just got a value bet here. Even if your opponent has king queen, you're ahead. The river is the queen of clubs, and it completes not only a flush and a straight, but also some full house outs. Cats goes ahead and leads out for half pot, 600k bet here, and I dislike this play. Even though I don't know how to play this game, you know, GTO wise, I for sure can say that this, you know, is as very marginal as, as a value bet because think about it, everything got there. Um, there's only 36 cards. It's not like No Limit Hold'em where, you know, you're gonna get looked up by that many top pairs. Sure, there's, there's still some top pairs around. There's King Queen, uh, there's King Jack, there's King 10, King 7, King 6, King 8. Um, but at the same time, some of those hands might also get turned into bluff and, and, and raise on you if, if someone has a club blocker. And also, you know, you're, you might just not get called um, with the line you took because you're not that high up in your range. When you have pocket aces here and you bet the turn already after check calling a flop, you can have a bunch of 9x combination that you wouldn't want to let go on the flop, right? You get a 9. Uh, you could have limped in with 9-7, 9-10, 9-jack, unless you just fold them all when they're suited, for instance. Um, and you could have even some slow plays, like even 9-8, king, king 9, unless you always want to check raise that. You, you can have just a bunch of bad hands, and you get all the flushes, basically. The clubs got there as well, and you can have 10-jack. So there's so many better combinations you could have in these shoes. And if, if Key ends up here with top pair, I think calling down top pair on this run up for three streets is just a little bit too much. And uh, therefore the value bet is not gonna get called by, you know, 50% uh, hands or more by worse hands, right? You need that to happen, otherwise you don't have a value bet. It does. It's, it's, Key is an interesting blocker. He blocks the straight, he blocks flushes with the 10, and he has a top pair hand, so he blocks a lot of important full houses. <laughs> this is a pretty tough situation for him, he's getting a pretty good price. He's getting 3 to 1 on his money, that means he only has to be right 1 out of 4 times to break even. 
So some things Kenneth Keith probably think about is would Carry Cats bet a hand like King 10 oh, and King Jack himself? Wow. wow. Key now looks over to Cats and say, listen, my friend, I'm not going to call you down with top pair. I'm going to put in a raise to 1.6 million as a 10 of clubs block, which is a very essential blocker in this hand. Not only does he block a hand like 10-8 suited, 10-jack suited, um, is 10 suited. No, he also, you know, blocks some of, of the boat outs. He has a king in his hand too. So he has like two perfect cards to turn his hand into a bluff. And, you know, I absolutely love this play. Uh, yeah, and let's see what happens. Check raise. Oh now my god. This is a bluff. Yeah, this is a bluff. This is this is incredible. This this is the mark of a good player. Where you think like, oh should I call, should I fold? Wow, he's gonna lay it down what the a pocket move. aces. Didn't even think about it. What a move. Yeah, that is an insane bluff there. And it worked. He just knew. Yeah, he just thinks to himself, if 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 it goes check check I win, and if he bets, he probably has something better, so yeah, Ken of Key recognizing that, you know. He Let's talk about, you know, a little bit more about six plus Hold'em. Props to Cats here. He has not played this game before. I think just a little bit in a cash game, but not in a tournament format. And he managed to, fit, uh, you know, to get into this heads up match. Um, in this situation, I believe that, you know, it uh, has just l been a little bit too difficult for him to find the right solution. Uh, I strongly believe that a value bet on the river wasn't good here. And this is just because. I have a pot limit on my background and it's going to be much easier to get a grasp on, on games like 6 plus Hold'em when you have played multiple, multiple games. Uh, I'm a huge advocate of mixed games in general. I love to play new forms of poker and I'm happy to see 6 plus Hold'em, you know, making uh, something happen in, in a poker scene, even though it's just for high rolls. I hope that at some point, you know, there's going to be more tournaments spread uh, in 6 plus Hold'em. Also, to, you know, just to mix it up a little bit, it's going to be more fun again to play a new form of poker and, you know, more Variants like that coming up is is good, great for the game. Uh, as the great game of Pot Limit Oma, by the way. So uh, in in this instance, you know where if you guys want to improve on six plus hold, and what do you start with? Well, first of all, you know this uh, you gotta have rule of thumbs, and, and in six plus hold, and, you know one rule is is going to be that you know you have like half the combinations. You have about six hundred combos in this game instead of one two something, uh, one thousand two hundred something. And you just got to figure out, okay, how likely is it going to be having pocket aces, pocket kings? And, and the rule of thumb is going to be, okay, it's double as likely. You're going to have, uh, you know, instead of 0.5% or 1 in 200, you're going to have pocket aces 1 in 100. You're going to have pocket kings in 1 in 100. As a matter of fact, because there's just nine cards, each pocket pair has about a 10% of, you know, showing up as you're holding. Um, no, all pocket pairs together, a pocket pair, of course. And then also you can look at, okay, how likely is it going to be to have ace-king? And then, you know, just try to figure out how often you make a set on the flop, how often you make two pair. Look at each good hand that you're willing to play. Let's say the top 25% of all starting hands and ask yourself how likely is it going to be to flop something great in a heads up pot, in a multi-way pot. And it comes down to assessing your hand strength in a multi-way situation. So if you're a head, in a heads up pot, you know, top pair, top kicker uh, has, uh, you know, a lot of value, for example, in his heads up match, uh, because he can definitely win and sometimes generate two streets of value, maybe sometimes even three if the board is somewhat disconnected. Um, but at the same time, if you go multi-way, four, five-way to the flop uh, at the beginning of the game, you're, you're not going to get any value out of your top pairs. Uh, you might, you know, just deny some equity by betting, but these are the questions that you gotta ask yourself. So again, you have to do the combinatorics. You have to know that, okay, there's 36 cards. You have to know how many combos there are of each hand, figure out, uh, you know, how, how likely it is that you make a certain hand, what kind of hands you wanna make. You also have to know the rules, of course, which is pretty basic. And I don't think it's gonna be that hard. Flushes are just better than full houses and you can make wheels. Uh, with an a6789910. A6789. What? Yeah, that is going to be a wheel. So uh, that's what you have to figure out. And, and then you're all set and then you're ready to go. And then you got to play some hands, which, by the way, you can do on Bad Fair Poker, I believe. There's some um, games going there in 6 plus Hold'em. So whenever you get into those live games, having an experience online is massive. 
and uh, yeah, they can definitely help you out on the life felt. And then you just have to talk to people, find out how much they know, um, you find out how much they know about other games. You know, are they seasoned pro? Are they just picking up mixed games now for the first day? Or are they just some recreational who just try to have, tries to have fun? Um, so at the beginning, there's a huge potential in these games. I think uh, the ROI of some people in these tournaments, even though rec activities are uh, running close, are going to be insane. So if you can get a staking deal for these tournaments and uh, somehow manage to bring up a great game or having a great strategy going into it, um, yeah, there's going to be a huge potential for some people out there for sure. Uh, last but not least, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section what you want to know about 6 plus Hold'em. Maybe I can figure it out for you guys. Um, uh, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content coming up here in the future on this channel about 6 plus Hold'em. Let me know in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.